Last time we talked to Charlotte Ainsley about the importance of having a good culture in place, backed up by policies that lay out the expectations and responses that we need to see. But what can schools do when it does happen, when things go wrong and they need to manage a situation? Charlotte. Thank you, Natalie. Um, it's really important that schools manage the situation in the immediacy and that children should always be front and centre of any decision making that a school has to, or any provision that a school has to put in place. There may be very immediate challenging practical issues to deal with, like ensuring that children are not together in the same classes, for example, and this can be really tricky. And the appropriate staff should be made aware too, so that children can be offered support when they're not um, with the safeguarding lead, for example. Where there are extreme cases, children may, may be moved from the school to another setting, or there may be involvement from other agencies like social care or the police, and schools may need to make formal referrals into whatever uh, referral mechanism they have in place. It's important that all cases are treated as safeguarding cases because victims need to be protected and supported but children who have inflicted the abuse on another child will also need support as well. So it's really important that all of these situations are, are treated as safeguarding cases. And it does sound like this can be something that all schools would find very hard to manage, but especially so um, in a smaller setting where maybe the options are a little bit more limited or the resources are more limited. And, you know, they can't move a child to another child class because there isn't anyone to go to. Um, and like you said at the end there, how can we maintain support for the person who is experiencing the harm whilst also acknowledging the context um, for um, the other people involved and that the child being abusive might also be vulnerable in other ways? Absolutely. And that's really important. And that's why all of these cases need to be treated as safeguarding cases. And there might be other children who are who haven't been directly involved but may have witnessed the abuse as well and they need to be supported as well. There may be a therapeutic intervention that's required um, by either the school or via an external agency and parents and carers should obviously also be involved in this whole process because they need to feel reassured that their children are being protected appropriately in, in a school context. Schools may need to make some adjustments for children, so they may need to recognise that actually that, that young person can't go directly into a classroom first thing in the morning, that they do need to go into a safe space so that they can learn effectively. So all of these considerations need to be thought through um, in the context of a school. And the, the definition of peer on peer or child and child abuse is quite clear that it can happen in a range of settings, whether it's in school, out school, online, offline. Um, and it has a very broad spectrum for the definition of harm as well. Um, for many children, harm might fall under a more traditional form of bullying, um, but it can also be related to um, something more extreme, especially involving sexual harassment or sexual assault, even, for example. In these um, more extreme and potentially very much more complex cases, are there places that schools can turn to in particular? Yes, absolutely. Um, there's lots and lots of tools around to help schools measure things like harmful sexual behaviour, for example, and assessments that they can undertake. And if you do feel that a child is, is tipping into that harmful sexual behaviour territory, um, they will need direct support and you will need to involve external agencies and organisations like um, Bernardo's and the Centre for Child Sexual um, Exploitation and Abuse have some really useful information and support, not just for schools, but for parents, carers and young people as well. That, that's a really good point. Are there other resources? Where can people turn to um, to get some more guidance and further information on this? Yeah, Bernardo's have some great resources around things like harmful sexual behaviour, as do the NSPCC. Um, far as the solicitors have created a toolkit all around supporting schools in um, developing their approach to peer-on-peer -peer abuse. And the .gov website also has some help and support for schools around creating the right kind of culture and the right kind of policies and practices to make sure that they're in place. 
thank you, Charlotte, for sharing this information and the expertise on a topic that is difficult, both practically and emotionally to um, deal with. We are going to add those resources um, just mentioned into the email um, or into the video description, depending on how you're accessing this. And for more information, please do get in touch with Impero um, at info at imperosoftware.com or find us on social media. Um, and please let us know what other topics you'd like to cover in a future series.